the journey with learning to surrender to myself over and over and over and over again and melting the walls of my consciousness of who I think that I am. Mm -hmm. Because it's a co-creation with the same thing that creates a piece of fruit or a flower. It's, it's, it's Christ consciousness, it's, it's God, it's, it's Allah, it's Buddha, it's Krishna. It's, 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 it's a consciousness that's so far beyond what I can even comprehend or perceive. And I'm not here to put it in a box or define it or label it or judge it, but to let it flow through. Have you ever wanted to meet a true medicine woman in every sense of the word? Well, you're about to. Blue is absolutely one of the most incredible, powerful, beautiful, astonishing people that I've ever worked with in the medicine space. We tell the stories of our recent ayahuasca journey where I had that immediate proximal view of everything that she was doing, and it was absolutely stunning. And I can't wait to introduce you to my friend Blue. The truth is, is that we're all the master, we're all the healer, we're all the mystic. Give it up one time for Aubrey Marcus. Blue. So I've heard legends of how you operate in the ceremony space. And we've been friends for a little while. Mm -hmm. And you're a fantastic human. And then we did ayahuasca together. <laughs> and everything changed. <laughs> and I witnessed some magical shit. Mm. I was sitting at the end of ceremony two on Vailana's mat mm -hmm. and she was having a really tough time. Mm -hmm. Like this is her story to tell, but rewriting and reprogramming a lot of patterns from her whole life. Mm -hmm. And you were there doing work on her at the end of the ceremony. And for half an hour, I witnessed some of the most profound magic I've seen in my life. What, how did you arrive <laughs> to that place where you were able to do that thing which I saw and could feel, because I'm still in the medicine as well, right? Like I could feel exactly what you were doing and it was incredibly profound. Mm. And we'll try to unpack that for people a little bit more because they have no idea what I'm talking about. But how did you arrive to that place where you were able to do what I saw you do? <laughs> Great question to open it. Where you to go right to the core <laughs> yeah, of the I don't experience. Like to, I don't like to go in the shallow end when the deep end is just so nice. Yeah, yeah. It's the only waters I like to swim in these days. <laughs> I, I hear that. I hear you. <laughs> um, it's been a journey for sure. And honestly, I am also sitting front row witnessing and watching and being insanely humbled at the same at the same time as you are um but the journey with learning to surrender to myself over and over and over and over again and melting the walls of my consciousness of who i think that i am mm -hmm. because it's a co-creation with the same thing that creates a piece of fruit or a flower it's 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 christ consciousness it's it's god it's it's allah it's buddha it's krishna it's 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 a consciousness that's so far beyond what i can even comprehend or perceive and i'm not here to put it in a box or define it or label it or judge it but to let it flow through mm. and that piece is the journey of a lifetime is to let the co-creation with something greater than itself without needing to know and I tell you, I've died a million deaths within <laughs> this lifetime. And I've been on a very, 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 very deep initiation, a deep path with grandmother of learning to and meet And grandmother the is ayahuasca for grandmother people who ayahuasca. don't know mm -hmm. who grandmother you. is. <laughs> um, you know, like you go to your grandmother's house and uh, and she's like, loves you fiercely. But like, if you touch the thing she doesn't want you to touch, she's going to spank you on the ass. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been spanked quite a few times and I'm sure. I've been humble. Um, but my journey with grandmother ayahuasca started about seven years ago. And I was just a little humble student that walked into the space and I stumbled across this ceremony and I was wearing little shorts and a t-shirt and, uh, didn't really know a deep sense of my identity or a deep sense of really what I represented or what I, what I brought to the world. Did you have, you must've had some inklings though. I mean, you must have you must have felt some medicine moving through you before that first ceremony seven years ago. I mean, as a little girl, did were things just a little funny? And were you able to do certain things that most people were like, what are you doing, Blue? What are you doing? And you're like, I don't know, but I don't know. I can feel something. Um, 
Well, I definitely had an extremely vivid imagination, which has stayed alive. And it's allowed me to play in the realms where most people don't tap into. And also, you know, there's like blanket statements of get your head out of the clouds or um, you live in a fairy tale. And ultimately, you know, there's 8 billion people on the planet. There's 8 billion different realities happening simultaneously based off the lens you look at life through. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I may live in a fairy tale compared to other people. And my fairy tale is very real for me. And magic is the default. Well, so. I, I visited your fairy tale and it's real for me too. So we're in the same illusion, babe. It's like, this is it. <laughs> and I, I, I felt that because I felt you with me during that experience. And I felt you understand it. And I felt you get it. And I would say that something has catalyzed me exponentially in the realm of feeling is losing a large percentage of my hearing. Mm. Uh, about, f about five years ago, I was diagnosed with a hereditary hearing disorder. And at the time it was like catastrophic. I'm in my twenties and I've got given that I'm going deaf, it's getting worse and it's incurable. And these are the cards I've been dealt. And at the time it was extremely discombobulating. I felt extremely isolated. I felt like I could be in a room full of people and I was extremely alone because people were chatting and laughing and I had no idea what was going on. So I just didn't want to be around humans. But Albert Einstein talks about energy is never created nor destroyed, only changed in form. So I didn't lose something, I gained something, but it just required the right frame to understand what that was. Mm. And my deep work with the medicine allowed me to actually recognize that the energy just got relocated to the realm of feeling, a sense that we do not send any energy to, but it's, but it's there or a lot of energy towards because it doesn't, it's not in the physical realm, yet it's happening all the time and it's the realm of no bullshit. <laughs> and this is the realm that, that ayahuasca will take us to. Is the mask come off, the labels come off, our name, our job, our identi identity, our number in our bank account, all of this melts. And what is left? This is where people go through an ego death. Because what's left is the essence of who you are and how much you love. And that's actually the superpower here is just to sit with someone in a place where I have made peace with all parts of my consciousness. And I'm going to love you when you can't love yourself so that you can meet yourself in this space and heal. Mm. I'm not a healer. I'm a space holder. I just hold unconditional but, love. Yeah. Ultimately, because I I like to think that 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 Vailana in that moment was healing herself. I just have some tools in my tool belt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I also, you know, 11 years ago, sat with grandmother, sat mm -hmm. with ayahuasca, had an incredibly profound experience, and cer certain things went online. You know, I felt like I was able to, for the first time to really feel energy, to move energy, to put my consciousness with. Actually, it was Makad at the time who was going through re a recovery of a car accident, mm -hmm. and in that very first series of sessions with Maestro Orlando, I was able to send my consciousness to him and send healing to him. Mm -hmm. You know, at that point, and I, f I was certain that it was for real, not just my imagination doing it. So I can understand how certain things come online. And, and really what you're saying is that's really how it worked for you. You mm -hmm. just started sitting with the medicine and things became possible that were formerly just imagination, just a story, just an idea of what somebody else said, but then all of a sudden you were able to do it. And the, the feedback is actually what is the truth or not, right? So if, for example, Violana went through a full experience where right at the end, she went from going through the shamanic process of death, purification, rebirth, integration. So she went through a death of a certain identity that was not serving her. Then we went through a purification. We cleansed her off with Blue Mapacho. It was, it was a recalibration. Um, and then, and then uh, the rebirth happened and she came back and she tapped back into her channel, into her power. And so that's the feedback. That's mm -hmm. the truth of the situation is the feeling. The truth is always in the feeling. If she's still purging the whole time, now I'm going tick, 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 <laughs> around her and she ain't budging and she's not moving through any anything. But at the end, I'm like, yeah, she went through a profound healing. It's like, <laughs> well, there's a disconnect here. Yeah. But it's a co-creation with that she actually came back and then the next day was wearing all red because she went through a full rebirth. So that's the truth of it. Even though if you're a fly on the wall and you're like, what the heck is going on here? This isn't real. This is all fairy. Get your head out of the clouds. You're living in a fairy tale. Well, yes, based off of your lens, but the truth is that she went through a healing. So it's real. You had a very specific set of techniques and I understand the idea. So when I went into that space, that liminal space where things were possible that were formerly not possible, I was like, 
uh, what do I do here? Right. Do I move my hands like this? Maybe that kind of works. Do I blow my breath like this? Maybe that kind of works. Mm -hmm. But I had no structure to really what to do. Now, Maestro Orlando, El Dragón de la Selva, who we got to sit with, he has also his structure, the way that he blows on your hands, the way that he does the soplado on the top of your head. He has a few certain things, but I certainly wasn't engaged in that. So I was just kind of exploring. Did you have a mentor that taught you the techniques to apply to what you're sensing, knowing, feeling was telling you to do? Or was this something that you just intuited? My mentor is the medicine. Mm. And I'm very specific with my intentions at the beginning. Please, Grandmother Ayahuasca, use me as a vessel of unconditional love for the service and the greatest good of the space and for anybody that needs support. And please guide me wherever it is that I am meant to be, to be a vessel to, of, of support and help for the healing of this individual. And she, she listens. Intentions are so important. You know, you go in without intentions. It's like trying to hit a target with a bent arrow. You go in with intentions, you've got that straight arrow. <laughs> and so um, this is something that I've sat with the medicine a lot. And I have been learning to trust the medicines because it's quite a sensation to have another consciousness running the show inside of your body. Mm. That is, is, a, is a journey in itself to watch my hands, know exactly where the meridian points are, know exactly where to press, where, where there's blocked energy and what story is attached to that energy. The amount of information that's coming at me in those moments is, 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 is profound. There's nothing else to think about. And it's the only place for me, this is why I know it's my dharma, because there is not a single thought of doubt, of resistance, of uncertainty, of questioning myself. When I am in that zone, it's the only thing that makes sense in the world. There's no, almost no room for thinking in that place. And that, that would just be an impediment. That mm -hmm. would just be throwing gravel on a very smooth, you know, luge where you're just on this track. Mm -hmm. And if you start to think about it, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Then mm -hmm. everything just kind of crumbles and I, I felt that a little bit myself but I just, I'm just wondering I mean you've had what a few hundred sits with with ayahuasca um I would say that it's too many to count at this point well hundreds I would yeah probably yeah, yeah. and I guess with that intention and then because I I feel like I was learning some things myself that's I don't think that that's necessarily my path but as I've sat now close to 30 times it's Mm -hmm. more is possible now bef than ever before mm -hmm. things are happening languages started coming through me different things that like oh whoa what's this but i've been around this enough especially with vailana who languages come through her healing comes through her i've felt certain things happen that i just trusted and i was like oh this is cool yeah. you know i don't know exactly what this is for but you know why am i speaking like an insect I don't, i'm not really sure but it's helpful right now so i'm just going to continue to allow myself to do it but i guess what i'm marveling at was the precision of your work mm -hmm. and i guess i guess just over time and that instruction and just allowing your body to make you know to listen the way you specifically suck air blow air everything else that you're doing it it just is fully guided mm -hmm. 100% guided. I mean, it's it's like going to the gym and strengthening the muscle. I have, uh, I've sat with a very specific um, group of individuals guided by uh, one of my greatest teachers and mentors, Brianna Lynn, Reverend Brianna Lynn. And she created a space where there is a healing mat in the center. And um, the healing mat is an opportunity to uh, to train and refine the healing modalities. And she has seen me from day dot. She's like, there's something going on here, Blue. And I want you to be able to have the freedom to be able to explore it without the rigid rules and without the um uh the structure that says you you sit upright and you stay in your in your in your position. And even if there's those impulses, you stay. She's given me the wings to be able to trust what is coming through. And so that is a huge important piece is that there was this space that was supporting that as opposed to shunning it. And within that space, then I went to the gym and I started strengthening the muscle. And then really the muscle was to trust myself. Mm -hmm. But I believe that I've been doing this for lifetimes. And um, it it's so fluid and I would say that she, 
grandmother, ayahuasca, knows exactly what she's doing and she needs a physical body to be able to support with this next level of healing. And I just so have made a contract with her that I will be that physical body. And so I get to give all of the credit to her mm -hmm. um, and continue to be a humble student because every time I drink the medicine, I don't know where she's going to take me. <laughs> like the first two ceremonies, I was like conjuring the wind. That's a whole other story. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> and I was like in the quantum, playing with timelines, dusting off potentials. I can go into the grid. That's a whole journey in itself. But then the third ceremony completely took me down. So it's about coming to the medicine as a humble student always. And I did not plan to do that experience with Vi. I sat back on my mat and the medicine, uh, she was, because I like to have a conversation with her. And she was like, go over to Vi's mat, sit with her and place your hand on her spine. I'll guide you for the rest of it. Mm. And I had so much resistance because right at the beginning of ceremony, she was in, going into her, her death of, of, a, of, a, of an outdated conversation that is looping in her experience. And I recognize the shamanic cycle. So when someone's going through that cocoon experience, I let them be. So I was fighting, I was resisting with grandmother and I was like, oh, come on, no, but she's in her own space. And she's like, blue. I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> so it was like this ping pong match back and forth. It was like, and she's like, well, I'm not gonna go away with this nudge until you surrender to me. And so eventually I went over and then in the sharing circle the next day, she said that she was like crying out in her mind for help. Yeah, And so it's picking up on that. Yeah, I mean, she was in a place and I've seen her in similar places, obviously no experience is the same. I've seen her in similar places and I would venture to say, I mean, Vi is an incredibly powerful being who's capable mm -hmm. of miracle upon miracles. So who knows? But it feels like if you weren't there to offer that, that may still be with her now. And it may still be with her for the future. Like it was a very critical juncture mm -hmm. where she was at this, this breaking point mm -hmm. and she just needed a little support. And you worked with her for, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes while I was there at least. And then she kind of sat up from her crying and puking and everything else, all the purging that was going on, shaking, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then she got herself back in, was tapped into her own medicine. And you just said, welcome home. <laughs> I was like, damn, that was some gangster shit. Was some <laughs> gangster witchy shit that I just saw. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. I wanna talk a little bit more about the techniques because mm -hmm. you have a specific way that you use tobacco and your breath. And I know obviously this is guided by the medicine and you're not thinking about it when you're doing it, but retrospectively looking back at what happens, do you have an understanding of what you're actually doing and how mm -hmm. the paradigm of what's happening inside a person, how that works? Yeah. So one of my gifts is empathy. And empathy isn't just to empathize with someone, be like, oh, you know, it's to actually go into their experience. And I have the ability to sense where the block is. It was specifically in her lower spine. Um, so I, I detect where the block is energetically and I just go and make myself known, my presence known through my, through my hands and just sending all unconditional love to start to, to move the energy through. This was before she purged. What is that energy though? Like, what is it? I mean, for some people are like, yeah, what do you mean? Is like, is it a muscle? Mm -hmm. Is it, and obviously we know it's not that. You know, it's something else. It's life force. It's mm. chi. It's it's a story expressed in a etheric body. It's it's quite difficult to explain with the English language, I guess. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but that's what we're here to do. <laughs> right. Let's do it. We can't here make we people feel it podcast. here through this podcast. <laughs> um, I would say it intuitively. It uh, intuitively, I feel exactly where it is, where it's stored. And if you look at Bailana's body, just from the 3D perspective, you're like, yeah, she's, she's strong. She's, she's it's not a very clear, obvious blockage going on in her sure. body. So it's energetic. Um, it's not that she's carrying a lot of weight in her right hip or, you know, it's, it, 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 it's so far beyond just with the five senses. It's it's energetic and I can feel it specifically, right? Because I'm on two cups of medicine. So I've got a huge ally in my consciousness yeah. that's going, hey, right down her, her left spine is where there's a story that is a story and it's an illusion and it's looping and it's creating her to, to close off and not want to connect in this certain way. Yeah. Okay, 
go love that. Yeah. It's, it's as if, I guess the way that I would describe it, people always try to separate mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. and they all pretend that these are different things or soul even. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. Like it's all in the body, the mind, the spirit, the soul. It's all expressed in through the body. It's all woven together. It's inexorable. Mm -hmm. So there's the physical body stacked and layered exactly on top of the you know, somatic, the somatic body on top of that, on mm -hmm. top of the astral body, on top of the etheric, whatever you want to say, all the language, you know, it's just approximations anyways, mm -hmm. but it's all there mm -hmm. and you can access it through the physical body. Like this is the portal of portals, mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. skin we have, because we can actually touch it. it. It actually gives us a location to be able to access the things that are not able to be accessed in any other way. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, that energy was held in one particular part of her body, mm -hmm. which represented through whatever maps exist <laughs> and have always existed, some way in which that story was attracted to that particular spot, that's where she was holding it. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, that's too much to get into at this point, but for whatever reason, it was there, you were drawn to it. The thing that was going to untie the knot was unconditional love, which makes perfect sense. That is our divine nature, right? So anything else is a delusion and that delusion then stops the flow of energy from moving. Mm -hmm. So you're there, mm -hmm. empathy, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. What I are you doing? To it. You talk to it too. I talk to it. Okay. It feels like it has its own consciousness. Something that's looping for a prolonged period of time starts to build its own consciousness. Like an entity. Exactly. But this is nothing to be afraid of because it's just the absence of light. It's like, a little nasty flying squirrel we're keeping in our pocket of energy. <laughs> yeah. And it's sucking. Yeah. It's draining. And it's going to drain the people that are also interacting with her if it's not checked over a prolonged period of time. People get afraid of these things and, and we pick them up. We all pick them up over, over uh, our journey through this human experience. And it did not start with us. And it did not start with the person that passed it on to us. It goes very, very, very deep. And they have roots. And so we, it, 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 for me, it's like s turning on a light switch on it. And it, the second the light goes on, the shadow cannot exist in that space. And so um, Brianna would share with me that our attention and our intention can create magic. So I put all of my attention onto that place that I'm intuitively guided to. And then I pour my intention by having a conversation with it to move it through. The medicine's in her, the medicine's in me, mm -hmm. and we are communicating and co-creating. 50% of it is her because she's receptive. She's open, she's yeah. willing, and she trusts. 50% of it is me and the medicine and, and trusting what wants to come through. And then it was moving up the spine. And, and once we moved it up the spine, then this is when mm -hmm. purge came up because this is a physical manifestation of something that is being expelled from the body. When you say a conversation, are you actually using words in your mind? Because I didn't hear you whispering necessarily audibly. Mm -hmm. So you're in, in your mind, are you using language or are you using another type of conversation? In this specific instance, I did not speak out loud, but um, because of the space and honoring right. the space. But actually, I usually speak through um, very interesting language that usually comes through me. Um, but in this instance, I was um, communicating with it, I guess you would say telepathically. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, it was, uh, thank you for your lessons and you're no longer needed. Mm. Yeah. And... It's a, it's a gratitude because it's there for a specific reason. It's there to, to show us where we can learn and evolve and grow and up level exponentially. And simultaneously, we don't need to carry it. Once it's detected, once our attention and intention and she's recognized and experienced what the contraction is created because of this story and how she was ready because she, it would not have even called to me if she wasn't ready to release it. Right. So the fact that she had come to the ceremony, she's there to heal and it we're in this conversation now it's ready to go so i don't know it's not like i you know i have a plan of the specific sure. ways it's going to come out i'm just listening and i think that that also tied in with my hearing loss is our greatest challenge in this life always with every single person on this planet our greatest challenge is our greatest gift always so if i lost my hearing i'm here to listen more than i've ever listened in my life mm-hmm 
And I listen so deep to the subtleties. No one needs to say a thing. I know exactly how you're feeling. And so I can listen to what that story is and how it wants to move. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, so you're moving this energy up the spine. At a certain point and kind of throughout, you're doing uh, things with your breath. Mm -hmm. You're sucking, blowing, spitting-ish, using tobacco. Mm -hmm. What are these techniques actually doing and how do they facilitate this process so with the sucking and then the like (sighs) it's like a filtering system because i don't have an emotional attachment to this energy there's an emotional attachment for her that's why it's it's seated in the body but for me I, i don't have a karmic contract with this energy so i can actually inhale it and it transmutes in my body Mm -hmm. so this is a technique that i've learned through the medicine um and basically i inhale what isn't serving her and i transmute it in my body and then so it's taking the weight out of it it's probably the best way that i can describe it there's a there's that buddhist meditation practice songlin i think it's called Mm -hmm. and where you actually breathe in this dark smoke and then you exhale Mm. like pure light Mm -hmm. and it seems like it's in some ways a a, like a faster version of that a more precise Mm -hmm. surgical example of Mm -hmm. doing that where you're just pulling in this energy not worried about it sticking to you because you have no attachment to it which is i think is a beautiful thing for people to think of because i think we think of everything is so contagious you know we're in this world where everything's so contagious we have to be so afraid but these energetic things they need they need the roots they need the the soil the fertile ground to actually be able to stick Mm -hmm. and so what you're saying is well i don't have that in me this story is not going to attach itself to me so i'm able to pull that in alchemize it within through my furnace of unconditional love and exhale and transmute it Mm -hmm. and exhale um the fertile soil for the new roots to grow for a new story yeah and it's 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 the epitome of a hollow bone and that's the shamanic path is to allow it to come through without identifying with it because the second we identify we become sticky and that's when we take it on yeah and so it's specifically for empaths you know people that really feel very deeply the the journey for empaths is not to identify with what it is that you're experiencing it but what watch the different feelings to float by like a river and just like oh that's that and that's that and that's that but not i am this i am angry no i'm mm-hmm. experiencing anger there's two different energetics and so you be either become sticky and you take it on and then it becomes a fearful and it creates more division me and them or it's a recognition that I am a witness of this, but I hold only unconditional love. And as I can draw this out, alchemize it, and then just place back fertile soil for a new story to happen, then it's just, it's like a filtering system. (laughs) Orlando, uh, Maestro Orlando was telling me that when he blows tobacco, he's pushing in like pure light and love energy. He's pushing in this energy. And as he pushes that in the other negative energy has to come out like it's almost like it's almost like physics in a certain way like you push the energy in and then there's not enough room and so the other energy comes squirting out Mm -hmm. and and then you can inhale that to make sure that it you know really transmutes i suppose so it's blow and then push that new energy in and then that unlocks and releases some other energy and his method is very much like that when he's doing the tobaccos you know the tobacco healings Mm -hmm. it's and then immediately Mm -hmm. you know just capture it like fucking ghostbuster style and then (laughs) then just just move it along the way right and that's um and and i witness you do that in a different way obviously everybody has their own style but it was very similar Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i almost see through the being so when i'm the 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 breath goes and that that moves it that that places the energy behind it and then the kind of creates a new uh, imprint mm-hmm. um, but instead of just seeing the body I see like if I'm if I'm doing this for example on the heart I'll see through the heart and behind the heart so it goes all the way through as opposed to just stopping in inside right. yeah all the way through all the layers of the onion that we are all of the different yes. types it's like of dr strange you know when, when <laughs> yeah, they're totally. like, the ethereal body kind of leaves and like there's so many different layers yeah just because we, we we create an email and we you know we write it 
we press send, we don't see a letter fly out of our computer, but we know that that is sent. Mm -hmm. There is so much happening in the non-physical realm yeah. that we hardly tap into. Yet we just every single day send emails and don't even think about it. When we talk about the shamanic realms, people are like, oh, that's woo-woo. It's like, that's nah, like an email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's woo-woo if you haven't felt it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I have the deepest respect and sympathy. I think people should be skeptical because you know what? I've been around a lot of people who've done some woo-woo shit. And I'm like, I don't feel a thing. Right. I feel nothing. <laughs> what you did, this profound healing that you did is nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're going to charge for it, mm. you know, and that's a fucking big thing. So I don't, I don't actually think that skepticism as a default is a bad idea because I've seen a lot of people who are doing no healing of any sort, mm -hmm. just charging money and going through a charade, perhaps with good intentions, they just don't have the skills or perhaps they know that they can't really do anything, but who knows? I don't know. I think most of the time, probably people think they actually are doing some good. They've just deluded themselves. So I understand the skepticism, but then you actually get around some real shit. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, this is incontrovertible. This is mm -hmm. nothing that I can't argue with this anymore because I was there. I felt it. I saw it. It happened. It fucking happened. You know, and the result of it happening is the healing. Like you said, the proof is in what actually happens. And what happened that day for Vailana, I was just a bystander witnessing it and I could sense it, but it was profound and it happened. Mm -hmm. It was for real. And I've been in that other situation where it's happened for me and I know it's for real. And then at that point, you're, it's not, you're just insane. You're gaslighting yourself if you believe anything other than what you've experienced. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there was a reason, uh, a, a deeper reason why you were sitting and witnessing it. Because I, I believe you are, um, uh, you have a profound gift too. And that's why you could see it. Because you have to be a vibrational match to understand, comprehend and receive it for what it was. There was nobody else in that um, experience there was sit someone sitting in front of her but she also didn't fully receive fully what was happening mm -hmm. um in a, a she received her own medicine but there was a specific reason why you were sitting there and watching and um that's why i was shown that we have codes for each other no doubt no <laughs> doubt i'm ready and i saw that so this year has brought me so like leaps and bounds further on my spiritual path i've always been able to hold a very like tranquil and loving space you know mm -hmm. i've held space in many many ceremonies for many many years you know i mean especially back like you know i started the medicine path 22 years ago so for the first 12 years or so like there's not access to a bunch of random healers and witches and wizards that are roaming around it's just like look i can i can do this like i can ha we'll hang out we'll take some mushrooms like i'll you'll be good you know we'll smoke some dmt it's gonna be good you know, like I can set a right intention and whatever. And then this year though, with the apprenticeship I did with Porangi, with the body work, mm -hmm. I started to feel myself able to do things that I never thought I would be able to do before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> I also laughed because I was one of those people that was doing these things that looked like what healing looked like, but nothing was happening. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I would for sure do like the pantomime, like some kind of Reiki <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, and great. I'd be like, yeah, was that good? I bet it was good for you. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I didn't feel anything. I'm sure they didn't feel anything. I was just fucking moving my hands around, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like I, I drop in with him. I get his codes, if you want, like the downloads of what he's able to bring through and i'm starting to feel myself do it and i can feel it and then i'm like oh damn mm -hmm. what a fool loving loving trying as hard as he could best as he could in the best way possible fool but i was like trying to do things but i didn't feel anything so it wasn't happening and then all of a sudden i'm doing things and i'm feeling it and i'm like oh mm -hmm. oh there's the difference mm -hmm. you know now things are actually happening yeah so you know i appreciate that that um what you said and i i agree like i know things are possible now mm -hmm. that haven't been possible before and it's just the start of the journey mm -hmm. and it's it's exciting it's a it's a journey from moving beyond uh logic from moving out of the mind and fully into feeling fully into the feeling realm and this is a realm that we aren't trained in really being we live in a reality where it it's it, it, it's masculine dominated it, it's operating in the mind 
And also I think that, you know, the reason why people resonate so deeply with your work and with your podcast is because you, you walk a really beautiful balance between allowing yourself to feel and be witnessed in that and simultaneously building a structure so that the magic magic can flow through. Mm. And I think that this is a, a great gift for you because you can set up the experience and then now your training is to just drop all of the identities of who you think you are and fully into what is alive in the moment, the medicine of the moment. And from that place, watch miracles happen. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> This is uh, this experience that we had was, I mean, uh, truly astounding in that I knew that we were actually sitting with a real dragon for one, like a real dragon. Mm -hmm. You know, Maestro Orlando, his his name, he goes by El Dragón de la Salva, and he has a whole story, and this story will be told. I actually got to interview him, and we'll see when all this content comes out and all it lays out. But we don't need to go into all that, but he was a real dragon and the only thing i could express with being in ceremony with you is like oh wow there was a real dragon at the head of the ceremony and then there was a real white witch in the ceremony there's a real one a real a real one a real glenda <laughs> And real, it was like, like, real. like real, like real, like a real one. She's my friend. It's a wizard, Harry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and it's like, I've always been drawn to these fantasy, mm. these fantasy novels and these fantasy stories and these fantasy art. And then there I was sitting, getting ayahuasca served to me by a dragon and watching a witch in real life. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And so I guess just to talk about that, I mean, we may touch on the dragon again. I'd love to get your, uh, your take on that experience with you because you've sat with the medicine a lot. But let's just talk about the, let's just talk about the term witch mm -hmm. because this is a very, this is a very charged very term mm -hmm. that's been around for a long time and usually in a denigrating way. But now it's coming back online in an awesome, respectful way mm. of like what someone's actual powers might be and there's also the dark side you know the brujos the brujas these the dark the dark mm. expression of this manipulative expression of this but you're purely purely in the light and but you're also the only word that i could use would be a witch mm. how what's your relationship with that word mm. Whew, it is so charged and it is something that ultimately the work that i do today um not that long ago, I would have been killed for. I would have been put on the stake and burnt publicly for. And it creates a lot of fear. There's a lot of charge around that word. Ultimately, if you break the word down, it means wise woman, a woman that is connected with the elements, a woman that is connected to communicating with nature and animals, um, working with the, 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 the medicines of the earth to heal others. And yet simultaneously, it, the way that it was set up, that, that the women are extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And I think that you have such a profound reverence for that. You really see it. And, and specifically with your relationship with Ilana, like you know, dating, uh, um, uh, not dating, married to a, in union with a woman that is, is, is also a witch in her own also, right. Um, there's, so. there's a reverence to it, but not everybody has that. And, you know, depending on what text you read, there's a l a millions, millions of women that were practicing anything to do with herbal medicines or anything to do with hand on healing were cast out as witches. And also the witches or the wise women, the healers, <laughs> Essentially, we didn't call ourselves witches. They were the, that was the name that was given to women that were healers. Um, mm -hmm. And so then it created this dogma and this fear around it. But this is the biggest piece of the suppression of the female voice on the planet. If you look at the issues on the planet, the feminine is out of balance with the masculine. Why? Because women were slaughtered for this work. Yeah. And we're and not, not talking a small, about not a small amount, like in large numbers. Large and whole numbers. lineages, whole yes. lineages just shunted and then our, our memory runs in our dna so i may be the great 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 granddaughter of a woman that was burnt and yet my memory still in my dna holds my throat when i speak and i'm afraid to be seen 
in this power because this I'm still new to this, this power flowing through me. And it requires a certain frame to allow this artwork to be presented. Ultimately, I was in an experience where I felt, you know, I'm with my soul family. I'm in a space where, um, where I'm loved and I'm seen and I'm celebrated and they haven't seen me fully yet. And so there's always that like, it might be too much. And I do wake up with a vulnerable vulnerability hangover the next day. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to go to breakfast. And they're either going to be like, Bleh! we're going to be like, it's the witch. Hide. <laughs> um, and this is really the work that I'm doing. This is my devotion is to support women specifically in recalibrating and reconnecting with their innate powers and their innate gifts. Everybody has superpowers. It's just really the permission that we give ourselves to let them come through in the safe places that are set up to allow these things to come through. Yeah. But um, I also, you know, I have, I have a tattoo on my hand that has specific symbols. Now, uh, through certain um, experience with with family members, um, I have been called a witch by my family members and actually- And not in a good way. Uh, sorry? And not in the good way. No, because it's the, it, they're, they're Christian. And so what's the Christian, the, the Christian foundation of the Christian religion or any religion is good and evil. And which was a derogatory term that was used for women that was connected to nature or the elements. And then they're cast out as evil. So it's justified to burn them because our religion is based off of this dualistic nature. And so now when you use the word witch and there is a religious program that is running in the f foundation of your identity, then you need to do everything to get that out. And I just so happen to fit that shoe size. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, and I have these symbols and I do this work and I'm a witch according to, according to what they know. And ultimately what I'm experiencing on the other side of the lens is I'm experiencing that I'm supporting people through some of the greatest healings that they've ever experienced yeah. in their lives. That is what is real. And I am so ready to stand in the fire and be projected on until kingdoms come because I know that I am leaving this planet more beautiful than I found it. And that's the only truth that I can live with. Other people will, will create stories based off of what they know. And we judge what we don't understand. And I get that. And I have compassion for that. And I genuinely love anybody that is going to create um, a judgment towards what it is that I do, but it's not going to stop me from doing it. I'm not going to be burnt in this lifetime. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. And if, and if you get burned, there's going to be a lot of people in that fire. <laughs> and that's what I felt when you were there with me as well. I was like, oh, wow, these, these two humans are my family for life because if you can meet me and hold space for this to come through, then, then you can have a friend for 40 years and never go to the depth where we went to in a very short period of time. And yeah. to me, that says the, 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 the fabric of the longevity of our connection. I too am dedicated to healing mm -hmm. myself, of course but the world mm -hmm. and so i see you and i see what you're doing so an attack on you is an attack on all things that are good it's an attack on the healing of the beings of this planet all beings and so <laughs> that means so much to me by they, the way yeah, like... <laughs> they, they come for you they come for me it's as simple as that I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Going back to the term witch, there's a certain power in reclaiming that word. You know, and it's it's like you see this with other words too that have been cast, especially towards women, but towards all people. A word like slut, for example. Mm -hmm. And then women will say, no, no, I'll reclaim that word. Fine. You want to call me a slut? I'll be a slut. And like, I'll own that and like reclaim. And there's like a power in it. And, and there's like, there's a certain, there's a certain power in actually using that word. And, and which certainly maybe doesn't have the same kind of, well, it, it does. It's just different, you know, and it's, there's power in, in reclaiming that word and say, is this what, this is what you wanted to call me. So here I am, mm -hmm. you know, I am this, mm -hmm. you know, can you deal with it? You know, and there's a power in that. There's also the other option of just being like, yeah, well, let's just stay away from that word. Right. You know, let's just like leave it to the side. 
But then again, when you do that, you leave room for people to use the word as like a, as an attack, as an arrow, as a barb. And so I think that's why these words, the reclamation of these words has so much power. What's your stance on, on that particular topic? Like mm. you, the use of the word, which, or calling it something else. Mm. I still haven't fully claimed the word myself. I have not presented myself as a witch. Oops. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I really try to avoid labels in, in sure. general. You know, people have said shaman. I really don't, I, I, I would never present myself as a shaman. Um, I would say I'm listening, <laughs> right. which is, um, uh, it, it, it seems kind of dull, but also simultaneously it means it can be anything. Uh, I can be a dragon in a moment. I can, mm -hmm. I can be a witch. I can be a crone. I can, but it's it's a listening to what's alive in the moment, as opposed to this is what I am, and I can only be defined as this. Um, it's multifaceted, multidimensional, which is the, the the realm of the medicine or the yeah. realm of healing in general. Um, that's what it truly means to be the hollow bone: is to be everything and nothing simultaneously. And so, I think that there is a reclamation of the witch that's happening in the in the in the collective right now within women the archetype the joan of arc energy that is like you know what i do have something inside of me and mm -hmm. i'm not going to be burnt again and i'm going to have all of the courage to start speaking and even though my voice trembles i'm going to share my story and my truth um and if the word witch supports that then then fully claim it then yeah. it, that is medicine for the yeah. planet and i have a sister that fully claims brianna she has been like i shared with you my one of my greatest teachers and and she has fully claimed the word witch and it can be used in 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 multiple ways we're like careful she's a witch you know it's really about the tone or like she's a witch <laughs> yeah you know and so um but anybody that's had any religious programming that's going to create a lot of their defenses to come up mm -hmm. because that represents evil it's when you think about this in history, you know, it's, you think about just men who had physical superiority over yeah. women yeah. and these powers threatened the balance of power amongst the sexes. Mm -hmm. All of a the sudden there was an access to a certain power that threatened the physicality mm -hmm. that men were able to bring. And so that created this fear. Mm -hmm. right and then you look at religion and this gave direct access to the divine which certainly most religion was built upon being the middleman between ordinary people and god so that they could actually as all middlemen do whether you're dealing drugs or you're dealing god the middleman gets fucking rich mm. you know what i mean and so obviously anybody who is offering direct access you know got to get them out it's just good business you know if you're the middleman you eliminate the competition mm -hmm. you know you become the, the source and the dealer of all divinity and but you look at it from that lens and it's just it's so sad but then nonetheless we think oh good thing we've good thing we've moved past that but really mm -hmm. you know like what are the institutions now that are suppressing different types of information suppressing natural methods of healing mm -hmm. you know suppressing all of these things it's it's still the energy of this is scary. It tips the balance of power and this is bad for business. So let's eliminate it. You know, and that's why all the great revolutionaries have been killed. That's why all of these things have happened is anything that threatens this balance of power is a threat and people who are addicted and drunk on power, they just eliminate it. And it's also the funny thing is, is it's not a sustainable source of power because it comes from no. something external. We're bypassing the fountain of youth, the greatest <laughs> nectar of life, which is the only place it can come from is internally. And women just to have the stargate enterprise between their legs, a portal from one dimension to the next, where every single human on this planet came out of. <laughs> a woman. Yep. How threatening. It threatens the very power structures that are in place right now. But hey, we're in the great reset. We're in the great purge of humanity right now in this time. And anything rotten in the foundation of humanity is coming out through the law of nature. It must. So what's mm -hmm. happening? The women are coming out and their voices are starting to be heard. The ones that have been behind the scenes healing, but not anymore. 
Mm-hmm. And here we are having a podcast about it. This is the first time I've publicly speak, spoken about this level of healing that I do. Yeah. And the mob will come. Mm-hmm. The mob will come. Mm-hmm. It, it's just the nature of it, you know, and this is something that all of us who are stepping forward to stand for something really beautiful, to mm-hmm. stand for the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. Mm-hmm. Like the mob is coming and it's there. All you have to do is put out your opinions and there's a million ways that you'll be attacked mm-hmm. and people will try to cancel you. The The advantage we have in our world right now is it's fucking intense to be canceled. It's intense to have a bunch of Instagram arrows slung at you, but it's not as intense as a big pile of sticks and a fucking lit torch. Mm. Mm. You know, like that was the reality mm-hmm. for a long time. We're like, we can handle this. <laughs> you know, like people aren't getting killed. And it, and yeah. And so hope, and, and I trust and believe that it's not going to go to that. I mean, of course, there is a dystopian idea in which things could go get so dark that mm-hmm. it could happen like that, but it doesn't look like it. You know, it doesn't, se- doesn't look like it. And it mm-hmm. looks like, yeah, the mob will come, but they're not going to come with their pitchforks. They're just going to come with Words. some shitty comments. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing that I'm feeling is that the contract that was created between you and I long ago and far away um, was to be able to talk about this, but then to have our tribe, have our crew, have our community um, where that's actually what's the most important. And, and, and we can have the internet trolls uh, say things and, and to try and break it down. But when you have community and when you have each other, then it's, it's, it's it, an immunity that, transcends that having the power over Mm -hmm. and that's why we need community that's why we need like-minded individuals and i use the word need very little yeah but it's extremely important yeah and when i sat in the ceremony and i I could see everybody's light bodies being not just a physical flesh puppet and the and, and the names that we have and the positions in society in which we 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 do but actually saw everyone's soul that was when i was like i am home with my family here and we're powerful as individuals but together when we unite we're unstoppable yeah and love will always win. And, and and we have come a long way. We have come a long way. Like you said, from pitchforks and from um, being burnt at the stake to Instagram comments or <laughs> right. a nasty email here or there. Like We've come a long way. But if someone was to come hunt me down and put me on a stake and burn me publicly, I mean, it would be unheard of. That would cause a revolution yeah so we are moving in a beautiful direction and we get to trust that everything is right on time but the fact that we're even having this conversation for me gives me hope the fact that the universe has has conspired through divine intervention that we sit down and have this conversation and you've desired to have a conversation with me and that we're talking about a very very unique experience that only you witnessed Mm -hmm. that to me says that there is something bigger at play here and this message is not about me that's the overwhelming feeling you get when you sit in an ayahuasca ceremony you can realize halfway through and i talked to my store orlando about this like halfway through everything can be like wow this is the rails are really coming off here like we had a fucking party barge show up in our third ceremony and start blaring like strange macarena level reggaeton off i like reggaeton but this was not good (laughs) you know this was not like don omar's greatest hits you know this is not awesome and But nonetheless, like after some time, you get to know like, oh, this is perfect too. I just don't know why or how. Like this is this is here for a reason. And everything, everything starts to make sense. And you see the benevolent hand Mm. guiding always these chance encounters, these relationships, these things that happen where you're like, you get a message to do something or something else happens, and all of a sudden it all tracks back and you're like, oh wow, we have a lot of support. Yes. We have a lot of fucking support. Oh, and right at the beginning of ceremony, I have um, I have uh, prayer beads, and there's 108 beads on them, and there's a space with the prayer beads that you can move the bead across. And just after I drank the first cup, um, what I like to do is with every single prayer bead, I call in 
all of my guides, but like individually or all of my, my the people that I love in my life and each bead represents a different person and they come and sit with me and I place my hand on their heart and they place their hand on my heart in my mind's eye and I say, I love you. And they say, I love you too. And then I go to the next bead. By the time I'm starting to feel the medicine, I have called in an army. <laughs> <laughs> I am like, okay, let's go. I could either spend that time going, is the medicine hitting? I'm not really sure. Is it, to, is it gonna happen? And I'm gonna be in this like kind of kind of static noise energy. Yeah. Or I can be in love, 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 and sending that um, and activating and calling forth that light army. So as soon as the medicine is starting to to move through, I'm I'm hitting the ground running and I and 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 I'm very, very supported and I feel very, very confident in wherever she wants to take me because I feel like, you know, how supported I truly am and how I'm not just doing this work for myself. I'm not just healing myself. I'm healing seven times, seven times, seven generations back and seven times, seven times, seven generations forward. I'm transmuting this for, as an example, one of the biggest pieces for me in the third ceremony was this dualistic nature of right and wrong. I'm healing this so that when I am raising my child and she bumps herself or she does something that, that is seen as wrong, I have actually transmuted out of my system. So I don't give that as my inheritance to her mm. and this is the, the 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 future of our planet is is our is our children and so this work is 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 not about us it is through us for the collective yeah and that is humbling because it's so easy to get caught up in well this is about me and this is my song and this is how i'm going to come across or these are my words and it's actually recognizing that we are all a voice for for liberation, for love. So if if a, if a sister is healing, I'm healing. If you are healing, I am healing. Mm -hmm. And there is no separation. Tatwa mm Masi. -hmm. I'm that too. What was your experience sitting with the dragon? Mm. Well, I guess... Uh, in my mind, my expectation of a dragon is that they're ferocious and fierce and scary, <laughs> um, powerful. I would say that I wasn't afraid. I wasn't, um, he wasn't ferocious. He was powerful. And I felt like I was on the same side of the dragon. <laughs> and yeah. I would definitely want a dragon as an ally. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. You know, if, if Chip Far really better is ally fan, than an enemy. I'm like, <laughs> All right, dragon, let's go. And yeah. that's what it felt like. The yeah. power of the dragon, undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, sitting in front of him when he blew the cinnamon blessing was, it went to the core of my being and it felt like um, a support in my spine that was, you're not alone, you're always protected and you're not the only witch around here <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and yeah. i was like oh yes you're speaking the soul of my language the language of my soul and i um after my blessing would go back and just like marinate in the magic of what it actually means to be human mm. and sadhguru shared a quote that said, I'm not here teaching others how to be superhuman. I'm teaching others that to be human is super. Mm. And just marinating in the gratitude that this experience, while we are floating on this huge rock hurling through space, held into orbit by a giant ball of fire. If you don't believe in magic, just look at the stars and remember who the fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it felt like to uh -huh. sit in the presence of the dragon. <laughs> yeah. There was a there was a time where he was blowing on the tips of my fingers and because he closes your hands almost like prayer hands and mm -hmm. he blows on the on the mm -hmm. palms and then he blows through the tips and when he did that I could feel just <sighs> dragon scales go all the oh. way up like my whole arms and and everything and it was it's just there's something about his energy mm -hmm. that in just a way and i could feel and see him like his hands like giant dragon's talons you know and you're just sitting there and just power is just effervescent it's just a 
abundantly flowing through him but he doesn't need to use it Mm -hmm. you know there's a gentleness to Mm -hmm. it it's there for whatever anything might come it's like yeah i'm here but now i'm with i'm with family we're here healing i'm with friends like like we're on we're all all on the same team Mm -hmm. you know so we won't get to see we won't get to witness i pray we won't get to witness actually the dragon in full roar where dragon fire is just billowing out you know like fuck i mean it would be a spectacle but like, yeah, yeah, nonetheless yeah. there's carnage if that's the if that's the reality like astral carnage but just to be in the presence of a being of that of that power and his songs his ikaros his everything that he would do i mean he could roll out this fat carpet of medicine yeah. for all of us there's just like this blanket that we're just in and it was it was just stunning and it reminds me of you know i've been fascinated with dragons since i was three years old and then the very first very first time i had an option i had an option to sit with three different shamans the very first time i did medicine and his name was the dragon so i was like okay i'm gonna go with him (laughs) you know i could have picked the other two most people did there was like 70 people like 10 picked the dragon Mm. you know and i was like all right this is for me and that's how I started. And now that's where I'm back. And now I realize how deeply like our paths are woven. I mean, this was the most profound set of experiences mm-hmm. I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And again, but it also points to what I was saying earlier about this benevolent hand. Like, why was I always fascinated with dragons? And now there's there's a real dragon, mm-hmm. you know, a being of this unlimited power that's holding the treasures and secrets of the divine mm-hmm. and love mm-hmm. and healing like and and i now i get to sit at his feet and he gets to put dragon scales on my arms and give me a piece of his cinnamon to bring with me as protection you know it's like fuck this is amazing (laughs) if you had a conversation with a 10 year old aubrey like like, look what i'm doing you're gonna sit with a real dragon (laughs) i'm like whoa whoa really i was like yes and a real witch too whoa (laughs) really (laughs) you know but 10 year old little aubrey is still there going whoa (laughs) yeah (laughs) there was a moment in the first ceremony so there was a moment in the first ceremony where orlando he just gave a nice long pause he's been doing a whole set of ikaros Mm -hmm. and he settles into this pause and I didn't really know what was going on, but some, so I felt some very strange magic, magical cosmic energy start to swirl through the Maloka, mm. almost like the song of the wind started to come and I could was hear it. Was it the first ceremony? It was the first ceremony. Oh, I, yes, I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I'm about to get to that. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, what is Orlando doing? What is he moving the wind? And the wind started moving in a very strange way. And then the wind got stronger. <laughs> and stronger and stronger and then a tree crashes snaps falls down and it's like whoa what is going on you know like very unusual and all the facility everybody's like that was very unusual wind and i was immediately like dragons just up with some tricks and then i talked to the dragon and i was like so what did you do with the wind he's like no i just take breaks to let people integrate from the music (laughs) you know and i was like huh so maybe it was random and then i hear your story about what you happened to be doing at the time where the wind picked up and the tree cracked and fell and what were you doing blue i might have been playing with the wind a little bit (laughs) um So this was really, really, really special, profound experience for me. Um, a little backstory: I have been um, uh, one of my sisters and other teachers, um, Reggie Riverbear, has been teaching me about how to work with the elements. Um, and I also just did um, Shunya with Sadhguru um, and got initiated into working with the elements in the morning. So. In the morning, um, I did 40 days of devotion and it was every single day waking up early and um, evoking the four um, directions and the four elements. So it consists of like um, lighting a fire and breathing in the fire and um, saying uh, mantras into um, water and then drinking it. Um, doing certain breath works and certain holds to evoke the, the air. Um 
and uh, there's consecrated earth that um, little pellets that you eat and I've, I've been eating them and then um, three times throughout the day I say thank you to the sun and say a prayer to the sun which is also working with spirit and I've been doing this in my morning practice and then also working with the elements on my altar. So any space you'll see when actually downstairs in the house, in my room, there's an altar set up and all four elements are on the altar. So every space that I'm in, I'm sleeping and I'm working with the elements also for the house. And at one point in the ceremony, uh, the medicine, we were having a conversation and, and, and she was saying, okay, I don't want you to get up with your light. I want you to trust that I'll take you exactly where you're supposed to be beyond your sight. So it's like, okay. So I felt like a, a very old lady and a newborn baby all wrapped into one. Each footstep was like, like learning to trust. And, and I didn't need to go to the bathroom, um, but I, but I was going outside and I was like, okay. So I was going walking outside and then I was starting to walk towards the bathroom and then all of a sudden my feet stopped and turned me and I was looking at the sky. Then while I was looking at the sky, my arms start doing I mean, the only reference point I have is is Doctor Strange, where the ancient one does like these these mudras, specific mudras that open up a portal. And while I was doing these mudras, and my arms were like like the wind came to me, and almost like felt like it was moving through my body. And when I was going like this, the wind started picking up and getting really, um, really strong, and these specific mudras activated a portal, what felt like uh, for me to connect deeper with the wind. And I felt like I became the wind. And I was consciously um, working with the wind in a way that I have never worked with the elements before like this. And I was having a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm Storm from X-Men. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Here we are in Costa Rica. <laughs> I am the wind. <laughs> no big deal. Um, and then just shortly after that, um, the tree fell down. And um, I just remember sort of like, okay, bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> and giggling to myself and thinking, you know, this, this is again, in a mo moment where I could be like, I could totally be making this up. Right. This could be, oh, Blue's outside flailing her arms around. <laughs> <laughs> and it coincides <laughs> with a fucking gnarly just little wind be. gust. Um, or... In my experience, it was very real. And I was meeting another level of magic that I've only read in storybooks or watched in movies. And that's mm -hmm. why I use the X-Men reference because it's the only reference point I have to this level of magic. This isn't something I sat with, sit with my girlfriend on a Wednesday night watching a movie be like, oh yeah, so have you been working with that fire? been conjuring it up? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's not something, it's just like a conversation on the reg. Right. Um, however, it was a very real. And then it wasn't until the sharing circle whenever you and, um, when we were talking about it, was I like, okay, so this is gonna be a nice fresh one for the journal. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite fantasy novels is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Mm. And it's about training. It's kind of like an, a more adult version of a Harry Potter story, but mm -hmm. it's training young magicians how to access their magic. And one of the you know codes that a magician can aspire to is naming. It's the naming of the thing. Mm -hmm. And when you can name it, this is the this is the analogy they use there. But you name the thing and then you could work with the thing because everything has a true name. Mm -hmm. There's like a true name. And whether you unlock that with your hands or whether you unlock that with a word or you unlock that with whatever you actually can connect to these things it's a beautiful story and a beautiful mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. and it it's interesting it's interesting that you know it was the wind in this case and so when you do connect to the wind because you can from a geological standpoint the wind is the difference and the variance between high pressure systems and low pressure systems and it creates this vacuum and it sucks different things mm -hmm. whatever i'm sure there's a meteorological explanation for all wind did you connect to the wind as a being, as an entity? What did the wind feel like? Like, who is the wind? <laughs> From my experience, the wind has a consciousness and the wind also supports us with, um, with our emotions um, and how teaching us that the only thing that's constant is change. And to work with the wind, to be able to support with the, the default understanding that change is my friend. And... Um, 
the wind speaks through have you ever experienced wind where there's a certain smell that just wafts into the space yes that's that's something that's also i'm starting to realize like in ayahuasca sorry to interrupt this flow that you're in but this is very significant for me because there'll be something that'll come through and it'll come through with the scent and i can smell it and i know it's an i know i know now that this is an this is a being like we're in the presence of a being and yes. sometimes that being will come when i'm on the medicine and it'll be like i'll get histamines and i remember the last time i was there in soltar i was like whoa and i could feel this being and then i could connect with the being and then i could see the being and i could smell it and it was making my like eyes water like i had allergies and i was like i was like what are you called spring you know i was like <laughs> what is this you know but it was like this massive massive being and then i think about it and even in my waking like in my waking not i say waking but in my normal life not on medicine at all there'll be certain moments where there'll be like a sweetness mm -hmm, to a smell mm -hmm. and i don't know what it is and other people can't smell it i'm like can you smell that for you yeah and then i put that together and it was like oh this is a being yes with messages of our ancestors with messages of the earth but not everybody's listening most are not and you're learning to listen and this is one of the greatest gifts we can ever give ourselves because there are so many messages and and the wind is always bringing messages those sweet smells those those musky smells they just specifically in the medicine space like a um, like a perfume you know like and no one else is experiencing but that was a message for you and sometimes the wind picks up sometimes quick and 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 the way that the wind was moving with me was from behind me and then through my arms as my arms were moving and that's when it felt like i was given wings to a new level of consciousness and that was my gift in that moment someone else could walk outside and be like oh bloody hell it's windy outside <laughs> wrap their jacket up sure. closer and go to the bathroom and that's their that's their experience um, but we're not all having the same experience and we're not all listening to the same level, of, uh, the same degree. Yeah. Um, but it's really fun when you start listening. You've got to move through a lot of like, oh, I haven't been listening to this. Oh, whoopsies. And you've got to like face off with yourself in a very real way. But once you start allowing that to be the default, that this is just, like you said, I'm here for transformation. I'm here for healing. Then that just becomes your devotional path. Then the beauty of listening also is presented. Mm. And when you can learn to listen to the earth, she's got some really beautiful things to say. Yes, indeed. As we wrap this up here, I want to get your opinion on a lot of us personify ayahuasca. You know, some people listening were like, why are they calling her grandmother? Why are they referring to her as she? What are you talking about? And for many of us, I would say the majority of us who work with the medicine long enough, we understand that she is a she is an entity mm -hmm. beyond just the pharmacological concoction of the vine, you know the copy vine and the you know the, the chakruna leaves mm -hmm. and the one piece whatever else is in there mm -hmm. she's a being and you've had a even though I, my relationship has been longer it's been more sporadic and you're from your perspective who is ayahuasca mm. what's her what's her nature who is she mm. Mm. she's the spirit of the earth well, it feels like it feels like a, a direct line of communication with mama gaia mm. and what she's got to say and her power and her magnitude and her conviction and her love and her healing and her i'm gonna do no harm i'm gonna take no shit <laughs> real time and she is a consciousness of her own and she teaches us a reciprocity is necessary to truly heal this planet. We're so good as a collective at taking. We're so good at consuming. We're so good at thinking about our own individual needs and desires and not really listening. But what she's here to bring is recognizing that there's a reciprocity with everything in life, with everything. And if we want to live a life that's truly infused with, with gifts and synchronicities and beauty, then we must recognize that giving and receiving is the same energy. And when we receive, we get to give and we create a reciprocity. So she's a reminder of that. She's the earth speaking through the vines that speaks into our neural networks to remind us of our power. 
that comes from within. And when we truly understand that power, it comes with a great responsibility that recognizing that if there's people on this planet that are suffering, we are all suffering to a certain mm. degree. And that interconnectedness allows us to live a life of service, which means a life of magic. Well said, well said. Would you like to bring us home with a song? I'd love to. <laughs> All right. We were gifted with many songs uh, from yourself and some of the other amazing magicians mm -hmm. uh, and musicians that we had in ceremony. And uh, I hope I hope that some of the recordings we did in there yeah. actually come through because it was it was stunning. It was like all of a sudden god had a bunch of different vocal cords to use right. i was like whoa that's a cool one whoa oh you're using the macad now that's that's cool oh you're using the blue you're using the violana yeah. fucking you're using the monica great this yeah. is amazing <laughs> you know? yeah meanwhile i'm just whispering an insect on my own, <laughs> on my own mat just shaking trying to keep it together <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of time before we we would get to hear the divinity using your your vocal cords well in some ways i mean the poetry that came through me is uh, is, is the way that it that uh, is, is the way that i think it expresses for me mm -hmm. and surely please that share that poem well. that you created i will i will oh. for sure <laughs> thank it's you beautiful. well let's uh yeah let's bring it home with the song okay perfect Tirinita de los ríos, danzaranza con el viento. Tirinita de los ríos, danzaranza con el viento. Con tus flores y aroma, perfuma los corazones. Con tus flores y aroma, perfuma los Cura, cura, cuerpecitos, limpia, limpia, espíritus. Cura, cura, cuerpecitos, limpia, limpia, espíritus. Que enteremos en caritos, abuelita, el curentera. Que enteremos muy puntitos. Sirenita, joven sana. Open my heart, find my way back home. Walk through the shadows, my truth is all I've ever known. Open my heart, find my way back home. Shadows, my truth is all I've ever known. Sirenita y de los ríos, danzaranza con el viento. Sirenita y de los ríos, danzaranza con el viento. Con te flores y aromas perfumado. Corazones, flores y aromas, perfumas los corazones. Cura, cura, cuerpecitos, limpia, limpia, espíritu. Cura, cura, cuerpecitos, limpia, limpia, espíritu. Haremos y caritos, abuelita cordera. Danzaremos muy juntitos, sirenita bobensana. Open my heart, find my way back home. Walk through the shadows, my truth is all I've ever known. Open my heart, find my way back home. Walk through the shadows, my truth 
is all I've ever known. Serenita y de los ríos, danza, danza con el viento. Serenita y de los ríos, danza, danza con el viento. Conte flores y aromas, perfumas los corazones. Más los corazones, cura, cura, cuerpecitos, limpia, limpia, espíritu, cura, cura, cuerpecitos, limpia, limpia, espíritu, entaremos y caritos, abuelita, cordera. Cantaremos muy juntitos, serenita, bobenzana. Open my heart, find my way back home. Walk through the shadows, my truth is all I've ever known. Open my heart, find my way back home. Walk through the shadows, my truth is all I've ever known. Open my heart, find my way back home. Walk through the shadows because I'm already May we all find our way back home. Blue, where can people find more of you? You have an amazing podcast. I was a guest on it. Uh, what else? Do you have a, you have a Spotify too, right? Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't have a Spotify yet. Um, I have a SoundCloud. Only a couple of songs on there. But I, the the music got reactivated in these last couple of so many songs. <laughs> I would say so. I would say so. <laughs> um but i have a podcast yeah like you said deja blue podcast that's on all podcasting platforms and then i am also on instagram uh, my instagram handle is of um at blue of earth no B L U of earth mm-hmm um and you can find everything in my bio there we can access my website but i would say that the two main things are the podcast which is also on youtube um as well as uh, my instagram handle and you oftentimes offer different masterminds mm-hmm. and different you know, i think caitlin was a part yeah. of one of your last ones and she's been raving about it <laughs> um so yeah if you're listening and interested and moved by this uh, keep a lookout for that kind of stuff. Yes, we have a uh, my myself and my dear sister Reggie Riverbear uh, facilitate a ten week online program for women, which is basically activating the mysteries in you, the from unlocking your DNA, your the, the potential hidden in your DNA through the gene keys, through working with um, unlocking our prosperity codes and rewriting our narrative around money to healing the microbiome in our gut and to allow ourselves to create the vitality from the inside out to building altars and working with the directions. It's basically a modern mystery school for activating the feminine um, within us as women and allowing ourselves to create a new default as magic. So we are enrolling for our next round. We're currently in our second round and we had Caitlin in the first program and <laughs> it's pretty life changing. We have guest speakers and facilitators and it's it, it's one of my favorite offerings to date. Amazing. Thank you so much, love. Mm. I'm with you to the end. Mm. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Love you guys. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this video. Make sure you hit subscribe. Follow me at Aubrey Marcus. Check out the Aubrey Marcus podcast available everywhere and leave a comment. Let me know if this video resonated or what else you would like to hear from me in the future. Thank you so much.